Hi, and welcome to Mr. Wilson Teaches Wire Figure. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a wire figure um, that takes some um, basic supplies. So I have my uh, gauge wire. This one is 1 8 of an inch. And I also have some smaller, so this is 1 16 um, aluminum wire gauge that you can cut and use to um, assemble it to the actual block of wood, which we'll show you later in the video. So the main figure is going to be made with the aluminum 1 8 um, some other supplies you'll need uh, for the wire working, I have needle nose pliers as well as um, clippers so I can cut it. I have a board that I'm going to mount this on. You don't necessarily need a round piece, uh, it can be any type of board as long as there's something to give it some weight on the bottom and keep it balanced. I'm going to be using a staple gun to put it all together at the end. Um, there are other ways of doing this, you can drill holes, you can epoxy it, you can um, assemble it however you like but the staple gun is probably the quickest and fastest so I'll show you that. Um, I'm going to be using a, a mannequin to help pose and figure out the proportion as I work on this. So I'll be showing you how to use this to incorporate um, the wire design as you go. And lastly, I've got some acrylic paint that I'm going to be using just to paint the wood so that it looks like a finished product. So I'm going to walk you step by step and we're going to start by actually painting the wood first so that it has time to dry. So when we're done with the project, we can assemble right away. I'm going to cut right to that. Okay, so the first step is just going to be acrylic painting the wood. So this is actually recycled from a different project. That's why there's a hole in there. Um, this is cut out from a cornhole board. So any board will work. And I'm just using your basic acrylic paint. This is chrome acryl. So it's actually supposed to have a shine to it. So anytime you paint something where there's an edge, it's actually easier to do the edge right away. So I'm able to hold on the center to not get paint everywhere on me as I do this. And then you can rotate it around and actually see what you're doing on each of the edges. And wood dries fairly quick as this is a little porous and it'll soak in. I'm going to set that down and just paint with the grain. And it should go by fairly quick. And we're starting with this so that we can then let it dry while we work on the wire figure. Um, you might have to do two coats too, depending on which color you're doing. So it looks like this color would be fine. Um, if I want it to be the true color of the paint, I would need another layer. Um, but this is good for what we're working with. So I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. And then we're going to fast forward right to the next part. Okay, so eventually this figure will be posed. Um, right now I've just got it in its basic stance so that I can start getting some proportion down. Um, the point of the wire figure is to actually show it in movement. So eventually I will be able to pose this and sort of move the wire around so it looks like that. But for now we're just keeping it arms out, legs straight down. And actually it's easier if you point the feet a little bit too and that can give you a real idea of what proportion we're working with. So I've got them laid out flat out and I'm going to start by taking the gauge wire and I'm just going to start by measuring him out. So we actually want this to go all the way down from foot, so there will be a bend right there, to his head. So right now I've got his head in place, there's where the chest is going to be foot comes all the way down. I'm going to do the same for this side and that's where that foot would end. So getting the right measurement to start makes this whole process a lot easier and then I can bend it again. I'm going to bring this right back up. Um, so there's lots of different techniques to do this. I find this one the easiest just to get a good base of how you actually want to look and typically as I work my way up and down I like to weave it in and out just to get a solid core so it's not a bunch of random lines all over the place. So I'm going to bring this up and around, get it all the way up to where the leg should end. So there's about where the leg should be. And then this area in here is the waist. So I'm starting out just by giving it a basic shape. So no matter which way I turn this, I still have each leg come out about where the waist would come in. And I can just start sort of wrapping it around and start giving it some volume as we don't want this to be two dimensional in the end. And this is going to bring me up to the arms. Um, so I am making this look a little easier than it is. It is hard to work the wire around. Some people find it's easier if you clip as you go and sort of just weave it in. But for the, the first part, I like to just keep it one strand. 
So I've got this coming out to the arm now. So I'm gonna bring it out. So there's the shoulder. We're gonna go out to the arm. So I'm gonna measure that out, bend it where it goes. Again, I weave it around a little bit. So I don't want this to be tons of wires everywhere. I want you to really know which is which. So foot versus arm, versus body part. And this wire is pretty easy to bend. Okay, so I've got this measured out to the arm. And then I'm gonna work my way over to the other side. So it comes out to here, bend. Again, weave it around. Bring it back into the base. All right, so you can start at seeing to pick up form. I'm gonna go around the neck once. I'm gonna go back around. And then this foot just needs a little bit more because this is the one we started with. I'm gonna bring it down to the base. Bend it just like the other one. Weave it back in. I'm gonna give it a little more around the butt and crotch area. And you want to wrap this around almost like a diaper so it keeps it all snug together. I'm going to go back up until I get into the chest. And then you can see the figure starting to appear. So periodically I just place it down, make sure everything's lining up like it's supposed to. And right now it doesn't have the exact form, so you can see I'm missing a lot of the volume in this area, but I am getting it down to where it needs to be. Um, so the head, we'll work on a little later. So over right now I'm just leaving it that loop, and then I'll show you how to adjust it. But this is the basic shape you need to start. Once you get this shape, usually what I do is I would clip it. And then anytime you have one of these harsh edges, you just weave it in and then sort of stick it towards the center. So we don't want them to show up later. So any way you can hide them just by pressing them up there is good. You can also use your needle nose pliers to press in. So if you want a harsher edge, all you have to do is press like that. And then you can actually make something smaller like that wrist area. So if I want this to be smaller, you can just squeeze in. You can also take a lot of these and twist. So if you're not strong enough, you can use these needle nose pliers to do that. So now that I've got the basic shape, now is my time to pose. So I'm gonna be taking the model, deciding what pose I wanna do. So if I wanted him standing, maybe one leg a little before the other one. So walking this hand down and we're gonna have him waving. So then I can take my model, lay him back down and start adding in where all these bends would be before we start adding on too much wire. Because as you add more wire on, it's going to be a lot more difficult to bend this around. So this would be your time to start adding in where all those joints are, based off of what your model is doing. And figuring out where things like the kneecap and the foot actually would be. This foot part here is really important, so having that curve, because eventually this is going to be where the staple is going to go across to hold that in. So if you're missing that part, it's going to get really difficult to actually assemble this later. So you gotta make sure that you have that foot coming forward. And sometimes I like to really mark that out by taking the pliers and really turning them up so that I know they're gonna be there. Let's get rid of this part. So that would actually show them standing. All right, so there's your basic shape right there. Um, this is usually how much I would use the model for. Um, I've set this aside. I'll keep judging back and forth and I'll show you that a little later just to show you where volume is. But a lot of this, I mean, you should know what human form looks like. So being able to add more onto it shouldn't be that difficult as you go. Um, this wire is very expensive. So you don't wanna to add tons and tons of weight to it and end up using so much wire that it becomes um, an expensive project. So we're just doing enough to add volume. So I'm gonna start by taking this wire and weaving it back in. So I'm gonna start by just placing it right into the chest area. So that's usually where you would start um, as it's the thickest area. Just hold it in place there. And then after a couple wraparounds, you won't have to hold it in place as the joints that you're adding will sort of take care of that for you. Um, so this area, a lot of people miss too, the shoulders. 
So if you go around just a couple of times, that's gonna create that extra weight in there and that'll make that area look better. Then I'm gonna think about the anatomy. So, so this chest will have some extra weight. Usually doing a pattern like that where it's an X go across, that helps build in where those pecs would be. And of course, depending on if you're doing female or male, you may have to add more weight. So remember, a female usually has smaller shoulders, bigger hips, whereas a male would be the opposite. So I'm adding in some weight around the wrist. So I'm not pulling as tight as I can. I'm leaving space in between. That's how you save some of the wire. I'm going through and just slightly adding pressure as I go. So the weight waist is gonna be thin, and then as I go down here towards the butt, it's gonna gain some weight. And the thigh, you want to be bigger. So as I go out, see how there's more weight in there? And then as you get towards the ankle, you can wrap it pretty tight. And then I'm gonna wrap back up, ankle being tight. And then once you get to the kneecap, you can start making it loose again as the thigh will be bigger. Go around the waist again. Oops, let's push that up a little bit. All right, let's go through the other thigh now. Um, what you can think about this like is having that first lines you made as the skeleton. And right now what we're adding on is all the muscle and tissue and things that actually make that skeleton move. So if you think about it like that, that helps figure out where to put each of these things. So the amount of weight I just put in the ankles and the thighs, that's good, those are done. So I don't need to worry about adding tons of stuff into there. And anytime you get an area that you're not too big on, you can use the needle nose pliers, sort of push it in if it goes out too far. And of course, there's the option of snipping and restarting. So if I didn't like a leg, I could snip it all off and just add it back in. Going back around the waist up here, that looks a little thin still. All right, let's add some on the arms. So remember, biceps, this is almost identical to the leg. So you're gonna go really tight all the way up to the wrist. And then as you work your way back down, you're gonna get a little looser with the bicep area and create some weight in there. Now you see what I mean about not being able to bend it later. So I had to get that pose in before I got too far because I know that I won't be able to actually bend a lot of these as you go on. All right, so remember a little looser on the bicep. As you get towards the wrist, it starts to get really tight. I'm gonna do a line right around there. And I've done these a couple times if I'm making this look really easy. But what you wanna do is just try to get some of that anatomy right so it looks the right volume for each area. All right, so I went a little tight on that one, so you can see it doesn't really come out as much as the other. So I'm just gonna go in the exact same spot, add another ring around, this time go a little looser and control it. I'm gonna reattach it back into that armpit. And go back up. All right, time for the head. So, so far I've got pretty much all of the body taken care of. There are some areas that I see I could use some more wires, like right in this area, it looks a little weird. So as I go through, I'll start to notice those things and go back and add them in. Um, but for now, I'm gonna, since I've got the wire up here, I'm gonna head towards the head. So for the head, I start by squeezing out the neck. And I actually usually twist it. And pull down on these. I'm going for a rounder shape. So there's a good basic for the head so that you have something to ring around first. So that'll go around and then you can start adding some of the weight. So this is probably again, hard to see on camera, but I'm leaving a, weaving a ring, leaving it loose because I want this to be 3D. So I want to start to come forward. I don't want to spend a lot of time and wire on one area because I don't want to waste money. I'm going through and just we're just making some rings around it. 
and as you go across all these parts every once in a while go back down to the neck give it a ring and I'll keep all the work that you did up on top I just went up and down go around the neck again ring it real tight and you can see the head start to take form so we want that head to be a 3d area um, I personally like when the arms are left as just open loops so it gives that illusion that there's a mass there if you wanted to do the same thing you did with this you could you could bring it around give it some depth um, I have seen people sit here with the needle nose pliers and actually make fingers in it that obviously takes a little bit more time but that's an option too as you do this all right so we're going back down I'm gonna fix that part of the leg I also am missing a butt in here so I'm gonna be pulling through and adding some extra weight by just making this ring a little bigger so as I go down to fix that thigh, I can add some weight into the butt there. Alright, so this is the part of the thigh that I wasn't liking. I'm going to give that an extra loop. So that will fill in that one spot. I'm just going to check the butt area, make sure there's more wire. And then whenever you have stray wire like this, just snip it, take the needle nose pliers and bury it in there. You won't really notice it later. All right, so there's the main figure. This is about how loose it should be. Oh, I've got my loops for the feet. Um, this, which I left on there, if you are adding more weight on the feet, that wouldn't be a problem because I'm not going to add more weight on the feet. I'm gonna snip it so you don't see it. So we've got our two loops. Squeeze that together a little bit. So you can see the two loops on the feet, loops on the hand that are now tight. Your head's got some weight. So this is a finished wire figure. Um, so I'm gonna fast forward to the next spot, uh, which is where we're assembling this onto the wood. Okay, so this next part is the assembling. So for the assembly, I'm using the smaller wire. This is 1 16th. Um, this is a lot easier to bend, so it's gonna allow me to weave in and out of um, this part without really affecting the shape. Um, my figure has these feet, which I'm gonna be able to weave into. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually place the figure onto the piece. This is what it would look like. I don't know if I can get it all on the camera here, flat against that. So you're going to position it the way you want it to do. Um, or to, to be on the area and then just give like a little X where those feet are in between. So I've got an X here and an X here. Um, that's a good indicator of where these are going to have to be assembled. And then I'm going to be taking long strands of this 16th aluminum wire. Probably not that long. So probably about 8 inches or so. And then you're going to be taking the staple gun and press it right onto the X. And you're going to staple it right into there in a crisscross pattern. And then you're going to just pull them up. And that's going to make a spot for that foot to go, and then these are going to weave right around the leg. So this is what it looks like in a side view. Got my crisscross pattern. These started flat, and now I'm just going to pull them up. I'm going to do the same thing to the other foot area, about eight inches. Alright, next is actually assembling the figure. So normally what I do is I try to at least get one of these things into the actual model and the rest sort of just let fall down right on top of it. I think we are going this way. Okay, so 
wrong one. So now that he's in the area, and you can see how strong it is already, just that one wire there is already sort of holding him up. This is what it looks like from the side. So we've got him in this sort of cage here. And then you're just gonna start by taking these wires and start one by one, just weaving them around. So I'm trying to create strength by holding him in place here, or by using these like vines where they're holding them down into one spot. So sort of the more back and forth, almost like a braid you can do, the better. Um, this one that I started with underneath it, where I weaved him in, if I can get this to go around, so you can see the loop I'm creating, by pulling onto it tight, it's gonna create a lockdown right in there, and then I start weaving it around, and that's really how you create the strength, is that one little piece is supposed to connect it all on there, and the rest of these get weaved up, back and forth between each other, and then it'll stay on there. Um, if you don't like the effect of having these little guys all around, you can actually make it long enough that they weave right into the whole object and it looks like it was originally a part of it. Um, but what I found is no one really notices them or minds when you're basically looking at the whole image. It's a, a very minute part. All right, so I'm going to hold it in place. Again, tighten that one knot. So that's now on there pretty secure. Start weaving this around. Weave this one around. We're sort of creating that home for him to stay in. And it should work out if you do this right, that no matter what position you have, no matter how unsturdy it might be, it should hold up pretty well. I have had some fall over on me, but typically if you are got all four in and you get both legs attached, you shouldn't have a problem with it. All right, so here's our guy now completely assembled onto the pedestals. You can see it's not really noticeable where any of these wires are, but he can now stand up on his own. You don't have to worry about him falling over. And I'll show you a better shot of it actually facing forward here in a second. Okay, so here's a view of the final project standing up. So you can see our mannequin that we started with and the wired one made up after. Um, so as long as you get that attached in, it should stand upright and you won't have a problem with it. And after this, you can add your own embellishments. Um, you can take fabric, you can create anything else you want on it. I've had people do superheroes, um, different athletic uh, uniforms. So whatever you want to add to it, you're good to go from this point on. Um, but that's the basics of how to make a wire figure.